So if a good logo is first and foremost clear, we want to make sure that the, the viewer's eye gets to it right away. So one really basic approach is to do basically what advertising always does, to do a central symmetrical approach, to basically do what target does and just get your eye right into the middle of the image and hold it there. It's also what CBS does. It's also what NBC does. It's what all of these logos do. And if they can do it effectively, and not just really piss you off, like it, it, it doesn't pay off well enough for you, then you're going to kind of admire it. Now let's see, is there any problem with this kind of logo design? Is it engaging? So central symmetrical can be engaging, but the problem with it is it only usually has one read. Right? It doesn't have lots of components because as soon as you have um, uh, two different elements, it, it loses the central focus. Right, So it's a little harder to make it engaging because it's just all, all one image, just really, really clean. So next question, is it versatile? Now this is where central symmetrical, I think, is maybe the, the most common logo and the most advantageous for a company because it is incredibly versatile. So this can be done, especially like CBS's logo or Target's logo or Shell's logo, not so much BP or NBC or even Obama's logo. They can be done, actually NBC's works this way. They can be done in black and white only, right? And because they don't have to have text that goes with it, they can be shrunken down really small and still be really recognizable. So yes, they check all three. So that is a good approach to start with. It's usually the first way I'll approach um, a logo design project. So next, another approach is what's called dynamic. And the only problem with central symmetrical is it's a little boring visually, right? Our eye likes to move at different speeds. So dynamic logos would be ones like the Rolling Stone logo. And by not being central symmetrical, you'll notice the difference. It moves the eye across and through the image, which is very different than being like a target where the eye goes to the middle and then it's held there. Another example is Twitter, right? It's definitely more dynamic. It's about movement. And so your eye runs across it and through it. And notice you can't really have that if it's symmetrical because our eye likes curves and it likes diagonals. Other dynamic logos, notice the Batman central symmetrical, the Bulldog central symmetrical, the Ram is central symmetrical, Starbucks is central symmetrical. But Burger King, how is this not central symmetrical? Well, it's got this swoosh kind of running through it, right? It also puts its text on a diagonal and it's trying to get our eye to kind of swirl around so it's kind of in between because it wants our eye to stay in, but it's always moving it. It's like a toilet bowl, right? Very different than Starbucks, which is really keeping everything tight inside. So dynamic logos are a little more rare. The most famous one is Nike Swoosh, which is all about dynamic movement. because that's their brand. What other example might we have? I actually really like 
the Lacoste kind of preppy alligator. Nice and dynamic, moves us across, especially that red tongue. And then one more for good measure. Computer's freezing up. All right. Here we go. I have a bunch of examples here. Ah, uh, here we go. That one's definitely dynamic. Ah, uh, Rio 2016, those Olympics. Beautiful dynamic logo. Which, if it was around longer, wouldn't need to have to include the text with it, right? But always at the beginning, you have to include the text. And if you're a sporting event like the Olympics or a sports brand like Nike, of course you want it to be dynamic, right? So that just makes sense. Yeah, I'm just going to block out the text. So you can see the problem with the, um, the combined mark, the combination mark. It's just a pain. They have to have both logo solutions together. Ah. <coughs> okay. So those are dynamic ones. They move the eye through and across the image. And I say at speed, right? So the Burger King one is kind of, it's dynamic. It's more dynamic than central symmetrical, but it's not as dynamic as these examples, right? So this is a matter of degrees. Now here's another one that can be a play uh, with positive and negative space. It gets more info than just one color, right? So for instance, I actually think the CBS logo is a nice play of positive and negative space. Because even though it's just black shapes, you're reading the, the white of the eye as the white of the eye, not empty space, right? Let's look at some really clear examples. The USA logo is just a brilliant logo type that's playing with positive and negative space. So do you guys see how? The S is only there because of the negative space between the other letters. See, other ones that play with positive and negative space. This kind of random one, key to the city, right? Nice example because you have both the city and the key together but you only need one shape to communicate both concepts. This one for the Kohler Zoo. The whole thing, the positive shapes are an elephant, but the negative shapes are a star, a giraffe, and a rhinoceros. It's just a clever approach. Now this is maybe too clever by half, you know, for, for solid design. And maybe it, it helps it be more engaging, but it might hurt the clarity a little bit, right? But if it can still just all be in one color, it's still incredibly versatile. And there's no reason it can't be a play of positive and negative, kind of like the RAM logo here, or the Obama logo with that open space being the sun going over a horizon as well as just the open space of an O. You can combine all of these different approaches. Let's see, is there another one that plays with positive and negative space? Oh, I think this one's pretty clever. 
for the Department of Health and Human Services. So you have the eagle, you know, which is our federal symbol, which is on all of the, the government symbols. But you have it made up with the negative space of these faces that merge into the eagle. So subtle but effective. All right. So if you're going to use these three helpful basic design approaches, make sure the sketch that you choose to actually develop is clear, engaging, and versatile. And the best way to do that is to design it first in just black shapes and then add color variations later, right? So I am going to do this for this project with this idea of combining a fork and a bull together. So I looked at different bull logos. Come on, show up. I looked at different art historical renditions of bulls, even Picasso, um, Minoan Crete, Greek, and kind of fan art versions. I looked at different sports teams, right? And inspired by those, I did some sketches. So sketching and conceptualizing. And I basically did two approaches. So this is my first round of sketches here. I want you to, to do sketches and then put it into the computer, right? So my first round of sketches was a central symmetrical one, right? That's also a play of positive and negative space. Because I want you to think of your logo design, especially if it's one of your first logo designs, to be about cut out black shapes. So this would all get bled and filled in with black, right? So you have very clean shapes. If you can cut it out of black construction paper, it's a good logo. So all you need is an X-Acto knife and black construction paper. So then this is also a play of positive and negative space because the thing that makes kind of the nose and the the stripe down the head is also a fork, right? So really straightforward for fork and bull. And then I just kind of liked, inspired by the Greek ones, I kind of liked the idea of this kind of monster bull <coughs> figure, but it was starting to rely a lot on, and this is more dynamic, right? The eye moves through it with diagonals and with curves, but this relies a lot on line work. And so my next revision because you sketch and then you revise your sketch after you've reflected on it so this is the one i'll be doing as my demo i realized i need each of these to be defined black shapes right for it to be as versatile clear simple as possible and engaging and i like the movement and i'm also paying attention to the negative shapes inside so everything now has been separated into its own shape and that's a much stronger place to start than just with a line drawing. Because what a logo needs to do, unlike an illustration, unlike a fine art piece, is it needs to be able to be recognized at that size, right? Not just up close. And the clearer you can make the shapes, the easier it works at small scale. So, then I have to pick which one. And actually, I'm just gonna, I can show you how to mock up both of those in this new program that's called Illustrator. And so that's what I'll be doing next. We have to learn what Illustrator is. We have to learn what vectors are, but we're do, you are making a simple logo with them that we're going to build with just black shapes first. So first identify kind of your best sketch. And then I'm going to open that in a new program, and that program is Adobe Illustrator. So you can do a screen grab of your sketch, flip it, and then open it with Illustrator. Okay, then we're going to go back to our Canvas course. <clears throat> 